All right, guys, welcome to another edition. If you're here from Fitness Culture or an OG Swolger Nation, welcome. Today, we're gonna be going over the mistakes people make when training their shoulders. Now, shoulders are one of my favorite body parts to train. They're complex. Really, when you start talking about shoulders, what are we talking about? Shoulders' main function, raise the arm to the front, to the side, to the back. That's an anterior delt, that's medial head, and that's posterior head. So, really three heads of the deltoid, and then we throw in the traps in there, which are really just in charge of raising our shoulder girdle up and back down. But there's so many things that I see people doing in the gym that could be changed up early on and thus avoiding injury later on. And they're really their gym routine and their gym training. So today, right off the bat, we're gonna go over exactly what you guys need to steer clear of. And then also I'm gonna tell you guys what you should be doing. So the first three points I'm really gonna make all have a relationship together. And it starts off with structural imbalances. So what I mean by that is we press a lot. If you're in the gym, bench press, overhead press, incline press, we do a lot of anterior work. We don't do as much posterior delt work. If you look at most bodybuilders, most professional bodybuilders out there or just your every average day Joe, they have a lot larger of an anterior delt than a rear delt, even in a ratio they're gonna have much larger developed anterior delts because there's so much more pressing rather than really targeting your rear delt. Now, when we target our rear delts on like a back day, for example, if you're utilizing really those lat muscles properly, you are using your rear delt as a secondary muscle, but not nearly to the extent that we allow ourselves to use our anterior delt as a secondary muscle group in something like a bench press or a tricep exercise or any kind of pressing exercises. Our anterior delts on all of those, you know, if, if you're doing a close grip bench press, if you're doing an incline press, if you're doing a tricep extension, a lot of times our secondary muscle is gonna be that anterior delt. And what happens is because those are such ego-driven lifts, it usually comes into play pretty quickly when doing a max bench press or a max reps at 225. So what, what ends up happening is that leaves us with overdeveloped anterior deltoids and underdeveloped rear delts. So we're gonna get more into that later on, but first we need to address some structural imbalances, meaning if you're not doing these things when you come into the gym and warm up, you're gonna leave yourself open for a risk of injury. So on our fitness culture programs, whenever we're doing any kind of pressing, we also work rotation. So with all the pressing that we're doing, it's important to also work that shoulder rotation in there as well. One thing you're gonna notice with these external rotators off the knee of the dumbbell is that my elbow is always being supported by my knee. I never wanna leave this unsupported and just be free in space with my shoulder moving weight. That is also gonna be something that's gonna leave your shoulder a little bit more at risk for injury. So everything we do, nice and controlled all the way down. Good stretch, all the way back and open it. You're gonna feel this throughout the shoulder as we work this. And this is gonna go all those little stabilizing, not just stabilizing muscles, but just moving full range of motion in there. Again, our shoulders are designed to raise the arms in different planes of motion and rotate the arms as well. So we're gonna make sure we're doing off the knee rotations on each side, something you don't need to go super heavy with. But coming into the gym, you see a lot of people doing this even with cables standing up. You can do that as well. I like doing it with some free weight here and really getting a good stretch. So the, the cable I'm talking about is when someone has the cable coming out from the machine, usually has a pad underneath their elbow if they're doing it right, and pulling externally rotating and then switching the direction and internally rotating. Those are great as well. I prefer doing them with these dumbbells because again, the stretch at the bottom. I know exactly how far I should be going in each one of these. Typically we do eight to 10 reps on these. And then we move on to our next exercise. So the next thing we're gonna do to improve structural balance in the shoulder is gonna be finding a bench that you can essentially lean over on and keep that forehead pressed against your hand. Now, you can do this kneeling here if you have to. Whatever you do, our main thing is gonna be to leave that forehead on our forearm. From there, we're gonna squeeze that scapula back and down with the shoulders. So right from here, 
boom. We do this in all rowing exercises pretty much as well. From here, we're going to raise that weight and you can see it's nice and light here. You don't need a ton of weight. You're gonna feel this a little bit in your trap as well, the higher you get it. But the point is not to go up super fast. We're nice and controlled, especially at the top, getting a good stretch there and then controlling it back down. Taking that shoulder joint through that range of motion. If you can't do this exercise because you don't have the shoulder mobility yet, what I want you guys to do is grab a band, position it around a fixed bar or anything that's not gonna move on you. So with the band up at about shoulder, shoulder level, we're gonna bend over, that forehead is gonna go to the ground, arms straight, thumbs to the sky, and then we're just gonna allow that band to help us into this position right here, keeping that forehead, keeping that forehead on the ground and back down. And you're gonna feel it pinching right in the shoulder blades there as you raise it up, whew, back down. The little things here are gonna go a long way. Typically six reps, each arm on each one of these, and then we go back through it a second time, warming up everything before we get into our workout. Now that we've addressed some structural issues, we can now focus on the fact that we overemphasize anterior delts and we de-emphasize posterior delt. Now again, this is done because we all like having a big bench press, we all like having strong triceps. So usually what ends up happening is on our chest and tricep days, our anterior delt also gets a lot of work. Not quite the same for our posterior delt and back day. So what I like to do is even if I'm doing chest that day or if it's an actual shoulder day, I'm hitting some posterior delt before I do any other work. This is to make sure, priority training principle, train your weakest body part first. So I'm gonna be lying on a slight inclined bench. You can call these pal raises or Arnold calls them side lying dumbbell raise. But basically what we're gonna be doing here, you can start with one foot on the ground or you can go straight onto the side, keeping your shoulder, elbow and wrist in one line coming all the way up. I like to look at the dumbbell as I raise it. You're gonna feel just it's gonna be a good range of motion exercise and you're also gonna get a lot of posterior delt here. Really opening up that shoulder. It's another good one to do at the beginning again because it's going to promote that structural awareness that we talked about. We don't wanna feel it too much in our trap. If you're starting to feel it too much in your trap, you're probably bunching up here. Keep that trap nice and relaxed down. Elbow, shoulder, and wrist all in that line. Come straight up. I'm not bending the arm. I'm not here. Straight up. Eight reps there. And then we're just gonna switch sides. First set all done with our pal raise. We got two more sets there. So again, I'm, I treat this almost as a warm up here. I just do three sets, eight to 10 reps on here before I then jump into the rest of my shoulder exercises. With this exercise, we're gonna be prioritizing posterior delts. If you're doing tons of pressing in your chest day, the things I recommend, don't train chest and shoulders in consecutive days. So my last chest day was three days ago. So I've had two days since then. The reason why we wanna steer clear of this is to allow ourselves not to do too many pressing exercises. If I did chest yesterday and I come in today, I've already hit my anterior delt pretty heavily during that chest and tricep workout. So another thing, if you train chest and shoulders on the same day, make sure that you realize anytime you're doing a pressing exercise, it's poor chest, you're also doing a lot of anterior delt work. So if that's your split right now, what you need to be doing is back off. Besides doing posterior delt work first, back off of that anterior delt work and maybe dumb down the amount of sets you're doing for that anterior delt, get more of the medial delt, get more of the posterior delt in there. And structurally, when we start talking about why the medial delt is so important, if you're into bodybuilding, you just wanna look good for the summertime, when you look at shoulders, there's really two things to get shoulder with. You have your genetics, your shoulder girdle. How wide are your shoulders? You know, that's from your mom and dad. That is your God-given shoulder with someone like Steve Reeves had exceptionally wide shoulders. Now, he didn't have great medial delts, but he had wide shoulders, you know, a wide clavicle and it set himself up for a great V taper. Now, if you're not blessed with Steve Reeves types genetics, what you need to do is you need to make sure you're training that medial delt. With all the anterior delt work we do, we often forget that that medial delt is gonna be much more important creating that width. Now, 
anterior delt, posterior delt, all of it. You need to have a well-developed 3D delt to, to have a good set of shoulders, but it's that medial delt that's really gonna give you that illusion of width. So after I do my posterior delt, I jump in and I do a, a medial delt typically always. Those are my two weak points. I wanna make sure I'm hitting those with maximum effort. So I'm gonna be going down and doing a seated lateral raise. All right guys, this brings me to the third thing people do wrong and that's go too heavy, which leads to improper form. So those two things are connected. When you go too heavy, you end up with improper form, which means you're not getting the most out of your workout. Now, what do I mean by that? With something like delts, they're relatively small muscle groups. So we're not gonna need heavy, heavy weight. What we're gonna really need is to slow down the movement, do things deliberately, making sure we're going full range of motion. So a lot of times in my shoulder workout, I'll take a seat because what that's gonna do is really make it harder to swing on things. One of the things we see a lot of people do when they're doing lateral raise is get this swing in right here. This is, is, is gonna really help your ego out. It's gonna make you feel like you're doing a lot of weight on the lateral raises, but it's not gonna help your medial delt grow. So we're gonna set up in this position and instead of swinging, we're gonna take a seated position, starting with a neutral grip, and we're going to raise the weight to the side. And at the top, we're just gonna pretend we're pouring out a pitcher of water. And what I mean by that, at the top of this, we're pouring out that pinky goes higher than the thumbs. So if I had two pitchers of water, I'm pouring that out. That right there, that movement right there. Again, our shoulders are involved in rotating our arm. So this right here, can bring a little bit more of that posterior delt, but also that medial delt's gonna be doing the primary amount of work there. So as we raise, we're also rotating and then back down. And what you're gonna see is my arms aren't completely locked out, but they're not bent either. How many times have we seen this in the gym? Bent elbows, getting a lot more trap work than anything. Remember, anytime your hands go higher than your shoulders, so anytime my hands go higher than my shoulders, my trap starts taking over. So I like to go just slightly above my shoulders to make sure I'm going full range of motion. But the minute we start doing more than that, trap's gonna take over there. So again, we don't wanna bunch up and do lateral raises here or go too high. Keep those shoulders down and back, rotating at the top. And then at the bottom, we're gonna talk about constant tension. One thing you see a lot of people doing in, in any type of movement they do is they allow themselves to really rest in between sets. Now, if your goal is to get bigger, you know, more aesthetically pleasing delts, I would really encourage you to have constant tension. If you're an Olympic weightlifter and your main goal is to clean and press, that obviously you don't want constant tension here. This press, this lockout, it's an essential part of your movement. So you have to know what you're training for. When we look from a bodybuilding perspective, this constant tension is what we're looking for because that time under tension is really going to relate to an increase in mass and hypertrophy. So dumbbells out to the side, coming up to the top, twisting, back down, controlled. And I don't come all the way down and rest here. I'm stopping just short. Ah, 10 to 12 repetitions on this. Lateral raises aren't the only place I see a lot of bad form. I also see it on the pressing exercises. So something like a military press or a standing barbell press or a push press. What I tend to see happen, people load up that weight and they start pressing here. A lot of the times that's because structurally they can't get into these positions that we worked on at the beginning. That's why it's so essential. There's countless old school bodybuilders that have no range in their shoulders now because of all the partial reps that they've done over their lifetime. Now, one of the things I wanna talk about again is the, the difference between an Olympic lifter and needing to lock out and a bodybuilder when we're talking about constant tension. Now, constant tension is still almost all the way locked out. I'm still tension there. My elbow's slightly bent, but I'm still in a position where my anterior delta are doing a lot of the work. Locking out is gonna come from, you know, if, if you are doing something for competition. But I still think, you know, if you're locking out on things, you're still getting full range of motion, which again, that's gonna have its benefits. Constant tension, coming all the way down, coming just short of locking out. The other thing that I see a lot of people doing in a pressing exercise 
is they don't know how to get their head out of the way. So from that side angle, you're gonna see this perfectly. If I'm doing a press, if I press straight up, which I should be doing, I'm hitting my chin. So what we need to do is we tuck our chin, move our head back, so it allows us to have a bar path that comes straight overhead. We finish that after that bar passes, punching our head through and coming back down. Now, for this reason, a barbell is gonna be a little bit more difficult than dumbbells for pressing. So if you're, if you're a beginner in the gym, it's imperative to learn how to not move the bar. Our bar isn't moving around our head. Our head is moving and that bar path is the one thing that's staying constant. So make sure you learn how to properly press. It's gonna make everything in your shoulder workouts a lot better. And again, it doesn't matter if we're doing dumbbells or barbells. We wanna make sure that we're following the correct path. All right guys, the last mistake people make when training shoulders is not getting enough variation with their exercises. Now, I know there's gonna be a lot of people out there saying, oh, you know, it's shoulders, you need some pressing, you need some lateral raises, but if you look at some of the great bodybuilders, you're gonna see the variety that they use. Besides just doing a static press, they're also gonna be doing push presses, behind the neck presses, seated dumbbell press, military press, hammer strength press. That's just the pressing exercises. We then get into the lateral movements. They're gonna be doing the seated dumbbell laterals. They're gonna be doing standing. They're gonna be doing it on a slant with a cable. One of my favorites is doing on an incline bench because it really provides tension throughout the entire movement because we utilize gravity to pull that weight down and the angle at the bottom doesn't allow us to rest. When we start talking about our posterior delts, besides the pal raise, we're gonna have a reverse pec deck that we're gonna really hammer our posterior delts on, a bent over T raise, as well as a wide Smith machine row. All of these things are really great ways to train and it's really gonna be about trial and error, figuring out what you respond well to and then switching it up every so often to give it that different stimulus. Also, lastly, one of the things that I know some people out there probably don't do and that's train traps on shoulder day. Now I always like to train traps on my shoulder day. A lot of people like to do them on back day, but because traps are involved anytime your hand goes above your shoulder, a lot of that happens during shoulder day. So I like to incorporate traps on there. It's impossible to, to not get some trap work done on a shoulder day. So I like to finish it off with some dumbbell shrugs or barbell shrugs or even behind the back barbell shrugs. So the idea here is to have fun with it, mix up your training programs. The next time you have a shoulder day, reference this video, pick out some of the things you wanna really focus in on and then get after it. Thank you guys for checking out this video. Like always, subscribe, give this a thumbs up and let me know what else you guys wanna see.